First of all, we're focused on whether we should welcome these as technologies. And I think there's two strands of objections coming. One is from people working from a broadly feminist perspective who are very worried about the kind of impact it's going to have on women and the perception of women in society and people's perception of sexuality in a way that will affect women. Uh, and then I think there's a lot of people who are coming from a more conservative direction who have certain concerns about what this is going to do for monogamy and what they call consider normal relationships. So I think those are the concerns, and those are the kinds of concerns that we try to address. Um, there are also some more technical, legal, regulatory kinds of issues. And then in terms of why we might like to see sex robots, I think um, some of us are talking about possible benefits in terms of society, uh, in terms of people's relationships, and in terms of people's psychology. And I think that um, people have recognized certain negative impacts to, to pornography, but they've also realized that this is a very complicated thing that also has a lot of positive impacts. And it's not at all clear from the research that people who view pornography acquire certain kinds of attitudes towards women. And, and for me, one of the really telling issues is the fact that in the last 20 years, as pornography has become vastly more available than it ever has before, um, violence against women and sexist attitudes have declined markedly. So I think that if you're worried that, you know, this sort of representation of women um, is going to destroy society, I think that it's, it's, it's a little difficult to make that, that case. Now, I don't think that means you can dismiss the concerns at all. I think this will be one way in which robots have a potentially concerning impact. However, I do think you need to balance that against other sorts of benefits, and I think those benefits will include benefits for women. Uh, one of the things I like to emphasize is that right now, the market for sexual devices, sex toys, is predominantly female. And the reason, I think, is not that mysterious, it's because um, women aren't always very satisfied with human heterosexual interactions. And I think there's a lot of potential to open up women's, you know, open, give women I would say new sexual opportunities and new ways to experience pleasure thanks to these robots that, you know, human males at least are not very good at doing. This does open up all kinds of opportunities to question monogamy um, in interesting ways. I think that if you wanted to give the conservatives some reassurance, if you felt that was something you wanted to do, you could also say, well, look, this is, this is in many cases going to be a salvation for monogamy. I mean, a lot of people, their relationships fall apart out of boredom, out of infidelity, and maybe some of these problems could have been solved with a rope. I think, first of all, it says people are very afraid of novelty. That's not a surprise. And especially with technology, people have a lot of anxieties about it. Um, I think that it shows that there's a lot of stigma around these kinds of technologies and around certain kinds of sexual experiences. That um, people have a very, I think, some would say, you know, a heteronormative even, but a very rigid idea of what normal sexual relationships look like. And I think that anyone coming out of the BDSM community or any kind of alternative sex community knows that, first of all, people will stigmatize any kind of alternative sexual practice. The other thing I would say people coming out of the BDSM or other kinds of communities like that will tell you is people also lie an awful lot about what they want and what they like. And I think there's a lot of lying going on as well. I think there's two issues around consent. One is what sort of consent are the robots modeling? Are they, even if they're not themselves agents, are they modeling a very bad model of consent as being these passive sort of recipients of whatever we want to do to them? And then the second thing is whether the robots themselves can acquire agency and can they therefore have, um, you know, moral status. Um, as far as the second one goes, I just am not sure that, I guess I'm on the more skeptical side in terms of how AI is going to develop, whether AI will ever develop to a point of genuine personhood and general, genuine moral existence. I, I don't think it's impossible. I think that it may arise, some real questions on that may arise, but I think they seem to be so far in the future that I must admit I'm not all that 
concerned about it. I may, be, I may be being too quick on that. But in terms of the kind of consent that they're modeling, I think that comes back again to some of the issues around the representation of women as well. And I think that for me, there are some risks. And I think that it comes down to needing to make sure that robots are part of a broader conversation about consent, about the status of women and so on. I definitely think that humans, humans have an amazing capacity to project themselves into the world and to connect with the world. I mean, I think that's probably one of the most fundamental things about us as humans is that, I mean, kids fall in love with their stuffed animals. People just, and that's what humans do. That is one of the wonderful things about us. Absolutely. Do I think it will be unhealthy? I'm not convinced that it has to be. I think that, yeah, you may have people who in some sense love their robots, people love their dogs, people love their stuffed animals, people love their cars, honestly, so um, I think robots will be an extension of that. Yeah.